I want to give a special shout out to all my patrons, my Biblio Spran, Biblio Howlers, and Biblio Mansers. Thank you so much for supporting my hobby and passion even more. It means so much to me. Hi everyone, Patek here. Today's video will be a big video that I posted two years ago and I thought this might be a good time to start updating this list. So today's video will be a topic about the top 15 best standalone books that I have ever read up to this day. When it comes to standalone novels, everyone has their own definition of what a standalone book is. But the most often used definition of a standalone book usually means that a book can be read and thoroughly enjoyed without reading any other books first. Everything starts and feels conclusive within that one book. There will be no cliffhanger ending. This means that these standalone novels could totally be part of a series or not. But in my opinion, there is another example of a standalone novel and that is a one-off standalone novel. Meaning that the standalone novel is not part of any main series. And the top 15 standalone books I'm going to talk about today will focus on mostly one-off standalone novels or a one-off standalone spin-off or prequel to a main series. This will be more clear as you progress to the video. But first, I would like to shout out five honorable mention. These five honorable mention are my favorite standalone novels as well, but they're the first book in a series of standalone novels with a sequel published already. I hope that's not too confusing. And the first honorable mention goes to Kings of the Wild by Nicholas Imes. This is the first book in the Bayern trilogy and I highly recommend this one if you haven't read it. Amazing book and I think a lot of fantasy fans will love this one. And the second honorable mention goes to Lancelot by Charles Christian. Just as a reminder, this Arthurian retelling worked absolutely well as a one of standalone but now there is a sequel to it and I do not think and that sequel definitely continue from what happened at the end of this book. But still, I still would recommend Lancelot as a great one-off standalone novel. And the third honorable mention goes to The Jet Setter of John Loon by Fondali. This is a standalone spin-off prequel novella to the main Green Bone Saga series and it is one of my favorite novella with a caveat. Whether you've read the main trilogy in the Green Bone Saga or not, this is still such a great novella. But personally, from my perspective, my experience of this novella is definitely enhanced because I've read the main trilogy first. So put that into consideration when I recommend this book. The fourth honorable mention goes to The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. This is the first book in the Cemetery of Forgotten Books series and the Cemetery of Forgotten Books to this day is still my favorite non-science fiction or fantasy series of all time. And I think a lot of people still don't know that well, there is a continuation after The Shadow of the Wind. And that's the thing about The Shadow of the Wind. It works so well as a one-off standalone that many people didn't even realize that there is a continuation to it. Three continuation. But yeah, the point stands. The Shadow of the Wind is a great standalone novel. And the last honorable mention goes to The Spirits of Vengeance by Rob J. Hayes. This is the third book in the Mortal Technics series. And the Mortal Technics is a series of standalone novels just like The Band. Just like The Band by Nicholas Eames. But in my opinion, Bloody Rose, the second book in The Band, and should only be read after you finish reading the Kings of the Wild. But for Spirits of Vengeance, even though reading the previous two books first will improve your reading experience of Spirits of Vengeance, but it is not by a wide margin. Imagine this, if you've read uh, The Lord of the Rings without reading The Hobbit, I think the experience is kind of similar to that. And yeah, I love Spirits of Vengeance. I think this is Rob J. Hayes' best work so far. So that's my five honorable mentions, but you know what? Actually, I will recommend one more honorable mention, and this is a short story, and it is for The Paper Managery by Ken Liu. Not the collection of short stories itself, but the short story titled The Paper Managery. It is only 15 pages long, and you can read it for free on the net. It is amazing, the best short story that I've read. And yes, it is a one-off standalone short story. So that's the end of the honorable mentions, and remember, they are all my favorites as well, and I certainly recommend all of them. So you might be wondering, why all these rules? Well, it's because if I start including every work, every book that work as a standalone novel, even if they're part of a main trilogy or a main series, this list will increase significantly, and you know what? That might end up defeating the point of a favorite standalone novel. Because, for example, just to give a few examples here, The Final Empire, uh, the first book in the Miss Bond trilogy by Bernard Sanderson, and then The Lives of Loch Lamora by Scott Lynch, and also The Amber Blade by Chris Wooding. All of them are the first volume in their own respective main series, but this first volume, all of them work so well as a one-off standalone novel. I think I will just talk about them in a different video someday. So now, let's move on to the main list of this top 15 standalone novels that I've read as of 2022. The main list consists of my favorite one-off standalone novels, 
or a one-off standalone spin-off or prequel to the main series. And at the time of posting this video, there are no direct sequels published yet or even announced. And just as a reminder, I have done a full spoiler free review for all the books I'm going to mention today. Let's start from the number 15 spot and it is for Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. This is a wholesome, cozy standalone novel and I think many readers will love this book as proven already. And I know that many people seem shocked that I love this slice of life and cozy standalone novel. But the thing is this, even though I love I love reading serious and dark tone fantasy novels. But Slice of Life as a genre, I have always loved reading Slice of Life or even watching Slice of Life anime. But Slice of Life is a genre that I love when I'm reading manga or watching anime. And Travis Baldry has arrived to prove me wrong. Now, there will be a sequel to Legends and Lattes, but that sequel has been confirmed to be a prequel taking place 20 years before the events of Legends and Lattes. So if you somehow haven't read this book that has taken the world of fantasy by a coffee, <laughs> I certainly recommend you to give it a try, even if you are a fan of reading dark tone fantasy novel or not. And moving on to the number 14 spot is a book that has been on my list two years ago as well, and it is The Martian by Andy Weir. I know that fans of Andy Weir have voiced their opinion that the newest book by Andy Weir, a Project Hail Mary, is a superior book compared to The Martian, but you know, I have to disagree. I love The Martian more. Even though I have watched the movie adaptation first, I still end up enjoying reading The Martian so much. It is funny, entertaining, emotional, and surprisingly, tense in plenty of sections in the book. Incredible one of sci-fi standalone, really highly recommended. Moving on to the next book, it is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. Just like The Martian, this was on my list two years ago and it is still on my list today. I just love The Song of Achilles. I have watched and read plenty of Trojan Wars retelling and because of that, I was initially apprehensive about reading The Song of Achilles. I mean, why experience another retelling of the Trojan Wars? But I finally gave in to the hype to the praises for this book and I was thoroughly surprise. It was incredible. Madeline Miller writes beautifully and in my opinion, The Song of Achilles is better than Circe. And speaking of a book that surprised me, this is a new addition to this list and it is uh, Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. So I think many of you know how much I dislike Abrutted by the same author and because of that, I almost never wanted to read Spinning Silver until I saw a review by Elliot Brooks mentioning that even if you dislike Abruta, this is still worth giving a try. And so I read Spinning Silver as the first book that I read within 2022. And yeah, she was right. Spinning Silver is so good. It is a huge upgrade compared to Uprooted. And the multiple first person perspective in this book were done amazingly well. There is no chapter header in Spinning Silver, but just from reading the first paragraph of each new chapter, I immediately knew whose perspectives I'm reading. It is that good. The voice distinction is nailed so well. And the setting, the way it's written really made me feel like I'm experiencing snowy landscape or winter, even though it doesn't exist in my country. Love this one. And if you, like me, someone who dislike Uprooted, I still would highly recommend Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. It is so good. Moving on to the number 11 spot, even though this has always been one of my favorite standalone novels, I didn't include it on my list two years ago. But now I've decided to just include it until a sequel is out. And that is Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. I think many of you know how much I love Brandon Sanderson's books now, especially the one in the Cosmere universe. I mean, I even got this super expensive Dragonsteel edition. But I didn't include Warbreaker in my list two years ago because I thought there would be a sequel titled Nightblood coming someday, so I thought I might as well just exclude it from my list of one of standalone novels. But you know what? Warbreaker has been published for 13 years now, and still Nightblood is still not out. And Warbreaker just works so well as a one-off standalone novel. I love the characters. Light Song in particular is one of my favorite characters written by Brandon Sanderson. And the magic system that involves color is, as always, fascinating and intricate. I love Warbreaker. And just as a reminder, if you're someone who wants to start reading Brandon Sanderson's books in the Cosmere universe, Warbreaker is a great standalone novel to start off your journey. Sanderson has mentioned that Nightblood will probably be published after the year 2024, after he's done with writing Stormlight 5. But still, 
that is still a probability. So until there's a final confirmation on when Nightblood will be published, I'm still including Warbreaker in my list of favorite standalone novels. And now at the number 10 spot, and now we move on to the number 10 spot, it is Gates of Fire by Stephen Pressfield. This is arguably one of the best historical fiction novel. It is so good. The courage, physical endurance, and battle skill portrayed by the Spartans inside the Gates of Fire is just inspiring. If you have watched the movie 300 by Zack Snyder, well, if you love that one, I guarantee you that you will love Gates of Fire even more than 300. I still like to open this book occasionally just to take a look at some passages because when you add the context to them, they're just inspiring. Plenty of them are encouraging and inspiring words that you definitely could use in your daily lives. Incredible historical fiction novel, definitely recommend it. And moving on to the next one, it is Recursion by Blake Crouch. This is a standalone sci-fi thriller, and even though I already included Recursion in my list two years ago, I still have to do it again here because Recursion, even though I've read it two years ago, is still my favorite one-off standalone sci-fi novel. I think Blake Crouch just writes super engaging and interesting sci-fi novel with different and ambitious topics in such an engaging manner. Love this one. If you have read Dark Matter by Blake Crouch and you enjoyed that one very much just like I did, and somehow you still haven't read Recursion yet, well, fix that. Now, this one is even better than Dark Matter, in my opinion. And next on the list is a new addition to this list, and it is Babel by R.F. Kuang. This is a dark academia novel, and in my opinion, this is even better than the Poppy War trilogy. I'm not even someone usually interested in dark academia as a genre, but Babel definitely made me a fan. And after thoroughly enjoying Babel, I absolutely have to read more dark academia books. I did a full spoiler review of Babel on this channel already, and I will leave the link to that in the description down below. But suffice to say that I love this one very much. At the number 7 spot, it is Dragon Mage by M. L. Spencer. So this one is the first book in the Ravenworld series. So just like Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson, this is the first book of a main series. But originally, Dragon Mage was written and intended to be a one-off standalone novel. But because so many people love this one, so many people love Dragon Mage, and the fans demanded for it to become a series, M. L. Spencer has decided to transform Dragon Mage into becoming the first book of a trilogy, Riven World Trilogy. But for now, the sequel, Champion of the Fallen, there is no release date yet for the sequel. So for now, Dragon Mage remain a great one-off standalone novel. It is immensely satisfying. The brotherhood between Aram and Marcus reminded me of Frodo and Sam from Lord of the Rings. And I think Dragon Mage, at the end of the day, reminded me why I love the classic epic fantasy genre in the first place. And now we move on to the number 6 spot. This is for The Emperor's Soul by Brandon Sanderson. So The Emperor's Soul is a novella taking place in the Cosmic Universe, or to be more specific, this takes place in the same world as Alan Trist in Cell. But this is without a doubt a one-off standalone novella for now. Brandon Sanderson has mentioned that there will be a sequel to The Emperor's Soul one day, but this is all still up in the air. This is still in the planning stage. It has been 10 years since The Emperor's Soul came out, and we might have to wait another 10 years before the sequel will be released. So until then, this remains, in my opinion, as a one-off standalone novella, and it is an absolutely amazing one. Honestly, I think The Emperor's Soul is my favorite novella of all time, at the number one spot. It is just that good. The Emperor's Soul has all the best aspects of Brandon Sanderson's storytelling skill, condensed in a small book. It is magnificent, and just like Warbreaker, if you feel intimidated by the size of Warbreaker, the 600 pages size, of Warbreaker and you want to start reading Brandon Sanderson's book in the Cosmere, The Emperor's Soul is another wonderful place for you to start your journey in the Cosmere universe. And now we arrive at the top 5 spot, and at the number 5 spot, it is a new addition to this list, and this is Swan Song by Robert McCammon. This is most likely the best post-apocalyptic novel that I've read. I know that the Swan Song has so often been compared to The Stand, and I think the comparison is quite understandable, but from my perspective, Swan Song is much better than The Stand. Yes, that's my honest opinion. I like The Stand, but the ending of The Stand completely disappointed me. But Swan Song from the first page to the last keeps getting better and better and better. Just like Babel, just like Babel, a few months ago I did a full spoiler review for Swan Song on the channel. If you want to know more about my thoughts regarding this incredible uh, novel, well, check that review out. And for the next three books on this list, I cannot make up my mind. I have spent hours thinking about the ranking for these next three books, 
and I cannot. I cannot decide which one I will rank above the others. Depending on my mood, I could just end up choosing any one of these three as my runner-up for the best standalone novel. So yeah, these three will share a runner-up spot. And the first one is again by Robert McCammon and this is Boy's Life. This is the first book by Robert McCammon that I, well, that I finished reading. I think this was in 2018 or 2019 and I immediately became a fan of Robert McCammon just from this one book. And it is because of how much I love Boy's Life that I gave Swan Song, his most popular book, a try and I don't regret it one bit. I mean, come on. Both Swan Song and Boy's Life are both included in my list of favorite books and also my favorite standalone novels now. And it is impressive because Boy's Life is a completely different kind of book compared to Swan Song. It is melancholic, it is solemn, it is a totally magnificent coming of age standalone novel. I just love Boy's Life so much and even though I haven't done any second read of this book, somehow this book just keeps getting better in my mind with the passing of time. And I think once I did a reread, I don't know when that will be, but who knows, I might just end up choosing Boy's Life over the next two books I'm going to mention. But I guess the same situation can also be applied to the next two books. And the next book in the runner-up spot, it is The Children of Hurin by J.R.R. Tolkien. I know that this is probably an unpopular opinion, but I think The Children of Hurin is J.R.R. Tolkien's best book. It is even better than Lord of the Rings, it is even better than The Hobbit. Two years ago, I didn't include The Children of Hurin because many people said that The Children of Hurin can only be read after you've read The Lord of the Rings first. But you know what, after thinking about it, and looking at my own experience of actually reading The Children of Hurin without reading The Lord of the Rings first, but I did watch the movie so many times, I have decided to include The Children of Hurin in my list of best standalone novels. It is just a beautifully written book. It is tragic, and I didn't expect this coming from J.R.R. Tolkien's. And back then, I totally didn't expect just how dark the story in The Children of Hurin would be. It is tragic, but at the same time, it is also beautifully written and there is such a mythical quality to the children of Urien and it just keeps getting better with each passing day for me even though i read the children of Urien plenty of years ago and yeah turin to rambar is one of the most memorable main characters i've come across in epic fantasy and i love this one so much reading the children of Urien sent me down a rabbit hole of searching everything related to the first age of the middle earth dagor dagorat and so many more. I love The Children of Urien so much and I will repeat it once more that this is the best book by J.R.R. Tolkien, in my opinion. And the third and final book in the runner-up spot, it is Skullzorn by Brian Staffley. Look at this beautiful cover art done by Richard Anderson. Love this cover art and I love this book. I think this book lived up to the great cover art and I included Skullzorn already in my runner-up spot in my list of favorite standalone novels two years ago. And that situation still hasn't changed here. I still love this book very much and without reading this book, I don't think I would have actually read more Brian Staffley's books. I mean, I enjoyed. I enjoyed reading The Emperor's Blade, I love Providence of Fire, and not gonna lie, I was disappointed with Last Mortal Bond, the third book in the first Chronicle of the Unhewn Throne trilogy. So overall, before I started reading Skullsworn, I just thought of the Chronicle of the Unhewn Throne trilogy as a good trilogy, but then I started reading Skullsworn, and I was just so impressed with Brian Staffley's writing in this book. And yes, Skullsworn is a standalone spin-off to the Chronicle of the Unhewn Throne trilogy. You don't have to read Chronicle of the Unhewn Throne first, but the main character, Pire Lakater, do appear plenty of times in the Chronicle of the Unhewn Throne trilogy, especially in the first book and the third book. And Skullsworn immediately made me fall in love with the book just from reading the first chapter. And I'm really grateful I read Skullsworn because without reading it, I do not think I would have jumped into reading uh, The Empire's Ruin, the first book in Ashes of the Unhewn Throne, the sequel trilogy to Chronicle of the Unhewn Throne, which in my opinion is the best book by Brian Staffley so far even better than Skullsworn. But yeah, this one works absolutely well as a one of standalone novel and I highly recommend you to check this one out if you still haven't read Skullsworn yet. And now it's time to talk about the number one spot of the best standalone novels that I've read to this day. And it shouldn't come as a surprise to many of you that The Sword of Kaigen by M.L. Wang is still my favorite standalone book of all time. And it's not only that, this is also the best self-published fantasy book that I've read. The Sword of Kaigen is one of the most intense and emotional books that I've read. This is a true masterpiece. The characterizations are simply excellent. Misaki, Mamoru, and plenty other characters are some 
of my favorite characters in the entire genre, especially Misaki and Mamoru. And the battles, oh my god, the battle in this book, whether it's the big war scenes or the dual scenes, everything were handled impeccably. I absolutely love the Sword of Kaigen. I read the Sword of Kaigen all the way back before the Sword of Kaigen was, well, officially released to the public. I read this one as an arc edition and back then, so few people, practically no one, has read the Sword of Kaigen yet. And I was just in shock by how good this was. And now the Sword of Kaigen has jumped so much in popularity since then. And I am truly happy for it. Because the Sword of Kaigen, this book, this masterpiece, and ML Wong deserves every success. I cannot wait to receive the beautiful limited edition hardcover of the Sword of Kaigen that is going to be published by Raidmark Creative to be released uh, next year. It makes me super happy that the Sword of Kaigen is finally getting a beautiful hardcover edition with a cover art by Felix Ortiz. So yeah, the Sword of Kaigen remained the reigning champion for the best self-published and standalone novel that I've ever read. So yeah, that's it for today's video. That's my updated favorite standalone novels of all time. And I think I will update this list again after two years. So in 2024. Yeah, I will update this list again in 2024. And speaking of updating lists, I have mentioned this only to my patrons, I think but I will update my favorite completed fantasy series of all time. And I will post it probably on Friday or maybe next Monday. We'll see. So yeah, that's pretty much it for today's video. Do let me know what you think about these books that I just mentioned. And do tell me what's your favorite standalone books of all time. As always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye-bye. Lastly, I want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons who keep on supporting me.